Hello everyone, I'm Stephen Drew, Head of Architecture at McDonald Company and founder of The Architectural Social. I hope that Santa brought you everything you wanted and you're resting up nice on the end of 2020. Look into 2021 though, I thought I would talk about the architectural software that I think will help accelerate your career. These are the kind of things that I think you should focus on in 2021 to get further ahead in architectural practice. So it's important to mention that I did study in my part one and part two, and I worked for three to four years in an architectural practice called EPR Architects, which has good design and they're a commercially successful practice. I have since left EPR Architects, I left them about 2014, and I focus in architectural recruitment since then. And over the years, I've recruited for a lot of different architectural practices. Some of them like EPR Architects, but also as well, the famous architectural practices such as Zaha Deed, I've recruited for Heatherwick Studios and other London architectural practices such as Patel Taylor. So over the years, the requirement for architectural software has completely changed. When I was looking for a job as a part one in 2009, if you knew AutoCAD or MicroStation, you could pretty much get a job at one of the bigger architectural practices and small to medium practices tended to use AutoCAD and Vectorworks. The emphasis has changed massively since then. We were talking back then about CAD software and there are still a few jobs that use CAD. There are a few requirements of people that can use Vectorworks and MicroStation, but 90% of the time, the roles that I currently work on now are Revit-based. So if you have not learned Revit already, it is fast becoming a prerequisite. It's not something which anymore is a nice to have. I expect every role that I work on in terms of architectural recruitment in the London area in 2021 will use Revit. So the first bit of advice, the main bit of advice, if you're taking away anything from this video is you need to perfect Revit. Now I'm sure a few of you are thinking, Steve, there are other software to use BIM. It's, Revit is not the only software needed to use BIM. And I completely agree. I know that there are a few architectural practices which use Vectorworx BIM, and there are a few architectural practices that use Archicad. But the key word is a few. The majority of architectural practices understand and use and have implemented Revit. So if you understand how to use Revit, you're gonna maximize your chances of employment. So we've established that if you haven't learned Revit yet, you need to learn it. And the best thing for you to do right now is to perfect your Revit skills. Then have a look at other additional modules within Revit, such as Dynamo. So one of the software skill sets that I saw more and more last year in terms of architectural recruitment, and I predict I'm gonna see a lot more in 2021, is how to use Dynamo. So Dynamo is very similar uh, to Grasshopper, uh, to what Grasshopper was to Rhino, okay? So we're talking about computational design, we're talking about parametric design. The fact is Dynamo is already in Revit and works alongside, so I can see there's gonna be a lot of examples and a lot of value in terms of using that, because on certain projects, it could be the kind of thing that computational design, that parametric design, it could be that you are the person that offers the solution which saves the company a lot of money in terms of of man hours because you've set you've made this uh, beautiful solution to a complicated problem so if you think of it from a business sense in architecture the fact that if someone can do 3d modeling if they can do parametric design within revit because you've already spent money on that revit license that's a bonus an architectural business doesn't necessarily want to be buying architectural software for the sake of it. So if you focus on maximizing Revit's potential, you're gonna go a long way. A little example of this is when I worked in architectural practice, I was one of the few people that understood MicroStation 2D as well as 3D. And the fact that I used to use 3D meant that I would use that skill set on various different teams. And when there were particular exercises which needed to be done with MicroStation 3D, I was one of the few people in the architectural practice which they would call upon for that expertise. One of the interesting ones that I've seen creep up a little bit in 2020 and I think it's going to be more prevalent in 2021 if you want to be ahead of the curve is check out Rhino Inside. 
So Rhino 3D is a 3D modeling tool, which is really good. I've used it myself in the past and a lot of architectural practices use it today. And so Rhino 3D would be a really good way to build 3D models. And then you also had the plugin to Rhino, which was Grasshopper. Now Grasshopper is similar to Dynamo as in their both parametric design tools. But what's interesting about Rhino is inside, the clues in the name, it's, it's, it's a way to embed Rhino within other software. So what we're talking about here is the amazing abilities that Rhino has to do complex 3D modeling inside Revit. So as a lot of big architectural practices already use Rhino 3D and they're using Revit, to me, the idea of using Rhino inside seems a bit like a no brainer, or I think it's gonna be a way that's gonna offer solutions to complicated problems. So that could be one to check out. Another piece of software that I predict we'll, we will see a lot more in 2021 is the use of 3D real-time visualization software that plugs into Revit. So I'm thinking of Twinmotion, I'm thinking of Lumion and Enscape. So these pieces of software are built on 3D gaming engines and this means that they can visualize, a, visualize the models, the Revit models quickly on the fly. So this is the kind of thing that I can see you're, where you're knocking out renders quickly in an architectural practice. You're taking, um, 3D get, you've taken these 3D models to design team meetings. I think it's gonna be more and more of a prevalent tool. And again, it plugs back into the Revit ecosystem. So you can, you can see this thing that we're constantly building up of everything plugs into Revit. So behind every program, there is a coding language which is being built in. And if you are someone that's always been curious or interested in how to program, well, that skill set's gonna offer a lot, a lot of value. So programming languages like C Sharp and Python are gonna be really, really, really important. And if you, over time, you build on that skill set on how to write a little bit of code and how you can make maybe a custom tool or a custom macro, that's gonna be so, so important. It could be that you become that person that pushes the bleeding edge and you make these custom solutions for architectural practices. So learning programming skills is always going to be a valuable addition to learning the base software. One of the skill sets which is really important to learn as an architect, as my director once told me at the time, is mastering Excel. Now I wasn't interested, I was like, oh my gosh, the idea of learning all this stuff in Excel and going into these Boolean strings and working out these macros seemed so, so boring. But if you do master Excel, it can become your best friend because over time it will save you time. If you learn things that accelerate and optimize the mundane tasks you do on a day-to-day -day basis, then Excel is gonna save you a lot of time. So while I've talked about learning Revit before and BIM is important, Excel and data crunching is an important part of every job I do it in recruitment. I'm sure a lot of you open up spreadsheets in architecture, so spend a bit of time learning more and more efficiencies and skills in Excel. So while mastering Excel is gonna save you a lot of time, learning and mastering Adobe Photoshop and InDesign also as well is gonna stand the test of the time. These are benchmark skills that if you improve in architecture, they will help you throughout your career. So InDesign tends to be used throughout architecture on marketing tools, design proposals. So I think it's a skill set which is a safe bet to learn because also it is the industry leader. A lot of Adobe software is industry leaders. And again, Photoshop. I mean, everyone's used Photoshop. When you're studying, you use Photoshop. In the industry, you use Photoshop. Photoshop is such an important tool because sometimes those drawings need a little bit of pizzazz and it might be that you need, you, you generate a visualization, you need to add the people, you need to add a bit of life to it, you need to correct the colors. So learning Photoshop is always a safe bet. I do not predict there's gonna be a new piece of software for our Photoshop in the future, and InDesign is also important as well. Okay, the idea of improving your skills in Excel might seem a little bit boring, but this is gonna save you time. So there's plenty of resources online. One of the things that I would suggest is to look on LinkedIn Learning. Everyone has a LinkedIn account, which means that it's connected to LinkedIn Learning. LinkedIn Learning is basically when LinkedIn bought up lynda.com, so there's loads of these online tutorials. And the best part is if you're already on LinkedIn, 
you can get a one month trial for free. And I think that there's an ongoing cost after that, but you can try it out for free and cancel it. So while I think that LinkedIn Learning is great, especially if you're a beginner or intermediate to learn Revit, to improve in your Photoshop, to get the grips with the stuff that you always wanted to get the grips with in Excel. If you really want to kind of learn the advanced lessons in architecture and you want to maybe learn the cutting edge stuff that you I like Rhino insides that you haven't had time to look at yet, then definitely check out Performance Network. So the Performance Network really is a great platform to learn resources from the world leading experts. So the experts in their fields will come on and talk about Rhino Insight. They will come on to talk about advanced scripting solutions for Grasshopper. It really is a fantastic resource from people at the top of their game. And if you want to learn anything niche or advanced and which is going to be helpful, then definitely check out the Performance Network. There is a course on the Performance Network for Rhino Inside, which is definitely worth checking out. And then you can kind of see a little bit of what we talked about before. I'll put the link below, but we've actually partnered with them on the Architectural Social, so you will get 50% off any course that takes your interest before January the 1st. After that, if you type in the code Architecture Social, you should get 10% off. So definitely worth checking out the variety of courses they've got. And if there is a particular niche course that is of interest to you, then you're going to get the expertise of world leading people on that subject. So really, really great resource to check out. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to see more of this content, subscribe to our YouTube channel. But more importantly, you should join us on the Architectural Social community, which now has over 3,000 people. You can sign up on architecturesocial.com and join us in the chat. Join us there and we can talk about this stuff. We actually do have one or two Revit and Dynamo courses run by people in the community. Thank you so much. Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you want me to do a video on anything in particular, do let me know. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care.